All right, let's get set up making the full traffic light sequence. We're going to use this diagram in order to get us set up. You'll notice that there's three LED lights, red, yellow, green. We have three resistors. They're using 220 ohms. We're going to use 330 ohms. I just have more of those resistors, which are going to be the orange, orange, brown resistors. And we're going to be plugging these lights into pin 25, 8, and 7. We're not going to be using a buzzer but we will be using a button. So I'm going to show you how to set all of that up. So I already kind of have it wired up, but I'm going to break it down and go through it. So the resistors, I have my resistor in row 20, in 15, and in row 10. In G, I have one side of the resistor, and in D, I have the other side of the resistor in row number 10. 15, same thing. I just want them lined up all in the same port to make my parallel circuit nice and organized. Then for the LED lights, I'm using this negative channel for the short leg of the LED. See that that short leg is in the negative side. And then I have that longer leg in the positive side, which is in row J and in 10. Then for the yellow light, I have it set up the same way. This is the short leg. This one is the long leg. Make sure you plug this in the right way. This negative channel, I'm going to be connecting all of my negative sides, and that'll be connected to the grounds. Then I'm going to take a jumper wire. These are all female male jumper wires, so you'll notice that this side has a prong, and the other side of the wire does not have a prong, so it can go on top of the GPIO pins. So I'm going to set these three GPIO pins that I have plugged into row 10, 15, and 20, into ports 25 for the red, eight for the yellow, and seven for the green. So if I'm starting at the bottom, I'm counting up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eighth pin is the seventh GPIO port. So these are, again, the names of the ports. This is the corresponding number on the map. So with my red GPIO, I'm gonna bring it over to the breadboard. I'm gonna count up. So I now have this red wire into port number seven. I'm going to plug my yellow wire one above that, which is going to be in port number eight. And then I'm going to take my last wire and I'm going to plug it one above that. So I now have these three LEDs set up to the GPIO pins. Next, I need to wire this button and then I need to make sure that the power and ground connects the circuit. So I'm going to take my button in row number 25. I'm going to stretch it across the middle so I have more room to work. The four length this way, the three length this way. I'm going to place this into the top left row. So I'm in 25 in the same leg as the button. And this is where I'm going to get power from. And I'm going to plug this power into GPIO number 21, the bottom right pin. That one's power. This one is going to be a male to male wire that is a prong on both sides. I'm going to plug this into the other leg, row 27. I can put this in any one of these pins that's going to get connected to the ground in this horizontal row. So let's place it right there in row 50. Now I need to take one more male to female connector, and I need to connect this entire negative row back to a ground pin. I'm going to place this into the first row in the negative channel, and then I'm going to bring this over to the third pin on the right side to bring this over to the grounds. Now that we have everything set up, we are gonna go onto our Raspberry Pi, click on the Raspberry programming, go to Thani, and we are gonna create a new file, and we're gonna save this right now so we don't have to later, and we're gonna to go to home, we're gonna to go to desktop, and we're gonna call this trafficlights.py. If you don't type the .py extension and you leave that out and you hit enter, it'll prompt you, would you like to put a .py extension .py? Click yes. Now we have it saved on our desktop and it's ready to go. The first thing we're going to type is from GPIO0, import button. Make sure this B is capitalized. Then we're going to nickname button, which is currently in port number 21, W-H-I-L-E, capital T and true. And we're going to then hit indent so that that's indented so that it's part of the while loop print button is pressed. So if I stop my code and start my code, it's going to say whether or not the button is currently pressed. You'll see that it's repeating false over and over. When I click this button, it's going to change the output while I hold it down to true. While I'm not holding it down, it's going to read out false. So it's currently the button's working. We can see that it's in port number 21 and our button is working, so we're gonna move on to the next step. So instead of getting the true or false values, we're gonna modify the while loop, and we're going to change this statement from instead of print button is pressed, we're gonna change it so that it says if 
button is pressed. Notice we have a period between button and is and an underscore between is and pressed. Then I have a colon at the end. Then the print statement needs to be indented with hitting the tab key so that that is part of the if statement. And then I have this print goodbye for the else statements. So if this happens, do this. Otherwise, do this. So let's run this program and see what happens. So it's currently saying goodbye because it's the else statement. But if I push the button and I press this down, it's going to say if it's pressed, it's going to now change it over to hello. As opposed to if I let go of it, the condition is now the else condition. It's not pressed, and now it's going to say goodbye. So we can then control, instead of saying true or false, what we want it to say based off of pushing our button. So now we're going to modify our code again so that instead of just having some else condition, we're going to specifically make it so that something happens when it's pressed and something happens when it's released. So I'm going to get rid of this code, and I'm going to replace it with while true, button wait for press, print pressed. Button wait for release, print released. So we have button dot wait underscore for press, button dot wait underscore for released. Make sure you have a single quote around the word pressed and released. Now I'm gonna stop this program, I'm gonna run it again, and now nothing's currently happening in the shell down below. Now when I click the button, it will then say pressed. When I let go of the button, it's then gonna say released. If I click it again, pressed released, every single time I click it, it's going to tell me what state is happening. So we're going to modify our code again. So we're going to add in comma space capital LED. And then after button 21, we're going to say lowercase LED equals capital LED 25, because we have currently our green LED light in pin number 25. So I'm going to then swap lines eight and line 10 from originally uh, print pressed and print released, and I'm gonna change that to led.on and led.off. So instead of printing out pressed or released, our button is what's gonna get controlled by it. So I'm gonna stop the program, then I'm gonna run the program, and you'll notice if I press it, it's not pressed released, but instead when I click this, my first of my lights is going to turn on while pressed, and turn off while released. I can also control the LED for it being blinking. So I can swap my LED.on to LED.blink, and then when I stop the code and I run the code, the light will continue to be blinking, and then when I push the button, it will then turn it off, because that's what it's waiting. Button wait for press, LED off. So either state whether it's on or whether it's currently off, it'll stay off. So by changing it to blink, we can control it to be permanently blinking, but waiting for the press for it to then happen. This part we're actually not going to be using. It is called a passive buzzer, and I'm going to show you how it works, and you'll probably know why we're not going to be doing this as a class. So there's a long leg and a short leg. We're going to take that long leg, and we're going to connect it into power. We're going to stretch this across the middle, and I now have that in row 40 for the long leg and the short leg. Again, you're not doing this step. embrace yourself. I will use the bottom left ground pin and that's the buzzer. Think of it like a fire alarm. If I were to cover it up, I kind of make a sound. The noise is coming out of the hole and it's quite annoying. I could not have 30 people all using that at the same time. But you can think like what you might want to do if you push the button, maybe you have a second emergency button, and when you click it, the buzzer goes off to tell people don't drive through the traffic sequence, and then, you know, it switches to red so that only the emergency vehicles can get through. So there might be a use to this thing, but we're not going to use it in this project. So we're going to change our code, and we're going to re-add in line number two from time import sleep, because we're gonna be using that sleep command in order to wait. I want you guys to save this code as the original trafficlights.py. You're gonna copy everything, and you're gonna click new program. We're gonna paste that, and then we're gonna click save, and we're gonna call this traffic lights version two. Enter on the keyboard, and we're gonna save that. So on our desktop, we now have version two for traffic lights. We're gonna modify this to nickname some different lights, because currently we only have one LED light, and we wanna be using three different LED lights. So instead of saying just LED, we're gonna map them as like 
green, red, and yellow. Now we knew from before that our green pin is in GPIO pin number 25. So we have already mapped that as LED, LED 25. We're gonna change this to be called green LED is LED.25. Then when we say LED dot on, we're gonna have to instead change that to say green LED, which will look like. So I now have green LED dot on sleep one, green LED dot off sleep one, and this is in a wall true loop. So when I stop my code and I run my code, you guys will notice that my green light is blinking and it's gonna remain on in the sequence forever. So the only reason that right now that the green one is being plugged in is because we're claiming that it's in port number 25. Now, if I were to instead change that to port number eight, just so you guys see that the word green doesn't actually do anything but be a nickname, if I run this code, now instead of my green light being blinking, we have my yellow light blinking. And the reason for that is the yellow light, this middle cord, is in GPIO pin number eight. But then again, that's not the yellow LED, so I'm gonna change that back to 25. And now what I need to do is I need to nickname some more of my LEDs. So yellow LED is in LED eight, red LED is in LED seven. So now I've modified my code. So I have green LED on sleep one, yellow LED on sleep one, red LED on sleep one, and then green LED off, yellow LED off, red LED off, sleep one, and then it's gonna keep repeating. So if I stop this code and I run it, this is what it's gonna look like. One, two, three. Now you probably have noticed that in real traffic lights, there's never a time where all of them are off as long as the traffic lights are working. So we're gonna modify our code to actually make it seem more realistic. And then we're eventually gonna control this to start it with the button. So it's your job now to modify those sleep commands to make this look realistic. I would recommend that you take all of your code again, you copy this, then go to new, paste it in, click save and call this traffic lights version three. Maybe when you set this button up, it will turn your lights to red. And well, obviously you don't want it to happen immediately or all cars would probably crash if the light was just immediately red and people would get tickets. So maybe this would put it to yellow for a little bit and then red. So it could be a stop sequence or something. Put it all together to make a realistic looking traffic light. Now you have everything you need to do and I'm excited to see your traffic lights.